Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. We are halfway through 2022, so I'm trying to get all these mid-year videos up on my channel. Last week I posted about the upcoming romance books that are coming out in the second half of 2022, so if you missed that, go check it out. And then today I am doing a book tag, pretty much like the only book tag that I ever do. It's the mid-year book freakout tag, and I've actually been holding off on making this video because I've been waiting for this certain book set to finally arrive, so I can pick it for the prettiest book question and it's finally here so let's just get started. The first question is the best book you've read so far in 2022 and since I'm personally terrible at choosing just one book for these kind of questions I have my top three. In no particular order my favorites of 2022 so far are My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey, Falls Boys by Penelope Douglas, and Twisted Hate by Anna Huang. These were all four and a half five star reads for me. I love them so much. Tessa's I read during a trip because I wanted to save my killer vacation to read while I was on vacation. And yes, I have this original cover before it got changed, but I did pre-order the new cover to pick up at a polycon, which I'm very, very excited about. But this one is like a cozy mystery romance that was so freaking adorable and hilarious to read. Like I genuinely laughed multiple times while I was reading this one. It's a grumpy sunshine dynamic. The hero is this giant grumpy bounty hunter who's been tasked with finding out like who murdered this guy. And the heroine is our sunshiny sweet school teacher who finds a dead body in her summer house rental and she pretty much forces herself into this investigation, this murder investigation, even though she has no experience with this kind of stuff. I loved it though. I thought it was the perfect vacation read, the perfect beach summer read. If you love Tessa Bailey, you'll love this one. And then Falls Boys, I mean, is anyone surprised that I loved the new Penelope Douglas book? No. It was so wonderful to be back in this fall away world but with the second generation this time and I thought Penelope Douglas did an amazing job with making these new characters this second generation stand out from their parents. This book was fun and exciting a little slow burn which I was surprised by but I wasn't mad about it. It's like new adult romantic suspense the main characters they are basically on the run from the police and there's this whole cast of new characters that we're introduced to and I already love like almost everyone and I'm dying for everyone's books. And then Twisted Hate by Anna Huang is definitely my favorite twisted book in the series. Like hands down this one is easily my top one. It's an amazing enemies to lovers romance, enemies with benefits romance. Josh and Jules have hated each other since book one and we get to feel that tension build throughout the series and it finally explodes in their book. It was crazy hot too. I mean hate sex, what do you expect? But I loved how the enemies to lovers aspect developed. The love between them felt very genuine the way it grew. But yeah, it was great. It's definitely a must read if you love enemies to lovers. The next question is what is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2022? For me, it has to be For Aunties and a Wedding by Jesse Q. Sutanto. It's the sequel to Dolly for Aunties, which I loved last year. And I think I love the sequel even more than the first book. It was so, so funny. I was cracking up while I was reading this one. I mean, I expected it to be funny because of the way book one was, but like the whole mafia aspect in the sequel was completely ridiculous and I loved it. So in book one, Medi, she reunited with her college love and now she's getting married to him in the second book. But things don't go exactly as planned because her wedding photographer may or may not be part of the mafia and she may or may not have like a hit out on someone. As always, the aunties are hilarious. They're definitely the star of the series. If you don't like over the top books, these books probably won't be for you. But if you can, you know, suspend your disbelief just go with the flow, go with the craziness of these books, these stories. I highly recommend them. Question three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. I'm going to share two of them. My first one is Start a War by Elle Thorpe. This is the first book in her new Reverse Harem romance series. It's a spin-off of her two other series which I read and loved so it's a new trilogy that I'm excited about. This first book came out earlier this month and then the sequel is coming out August 1st and then the third book is coming coming September 1st so it's not too much of a wait but I am really excited to start this one. One of the heroes he was introduced in the St. View prison series. He was one of the fellow prisoners and he's very much a psycho which is why the series is called St. View Psychos but there's also a biker hero and a brother's best friend hero so that should be really fun. And then the other new release that I still need to get to is In the Company of Fiends by Catherine Moon which is the standalone sequel to A Lady of Rooks Grave Man 
Manor, which was one of my favorite reads of 2021. It's another reverse harem romance, of course. And since it's Catherine Moon, we have monsters. I have talked to some people who have read this book already, and they say that it's very different. It's got a very different feel to A Lady First Grave Manor, but they still loved it. So I'm intrigued. I am planning on going into this one blind. Like all I know about this one is that it's set in the theater. The heroine, she works as a performer. I don't know how many heroes we're getting. I don't know what kind of heroes we're getting. So that will all be a surprise to me. Question four is what's the most anticipated release for the second half of 2022? This one is easily Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan because I am the biggest Kennedy Ryan fangirl. We are probably gonna have Kennedy Ryan join us for our book club again. So it'll probably be the November or December pick for Ravished by Romance whenever the book comes out. So keep an eye out for that if you love Kennedy Ryan. But this one is a second chance romance which I am so unbelievably excited about because it's probably my favorite trope. It's a second chance romance between a formerly married couple. They are divorced, they are co-parents, and they fall back in love. And since it's Kennedy Ryan, I am 100% sure we are getting like all the feels, all the emotions, all the angst, and all the steam. Number five is The Biggest Disappointment. I would say Flock by Kate Stewart. That was a huge disappointment, but I've talked about the book a couple times already on my channel and I don't really want to get into it again. So I will go with Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I could not deal with this book. I think I gave it two stars. It's like a one two star read for me. I did not like it. I really wanted to because it's a second chance romance, my favorite, and it was giving off Love in Other Words vibes. Like, the second chance romance from Christina Lauren. The main characters, they fell in love growing up as teens. They saw each other every summer and that's how they, you know, became friends and then became something more. And then something happens to break them up and they haven't seen each other in a decade. And now they reunite for his mother's funeral. And the weirdest thing about this book is that it literally happens in the course of two days. Like the present day romance happens over a weekend and I just could not believe it. On the back of the book, it says, six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart, a weekend to get it right. So I probably should have noted that a little bit better, but I just could not believe in their second chance romance. I could not believe in this present day love of theirs because they spent so little time together and most of the book is like the past chapters which is a little annoying. If I'm reading past present chapters I want most of the book or at least half of the book to be set in the present but a majority of this book is set in the past which doesn't really make sense to me because I don't really care about that as much as the present day romance which is you know the second chance romance. So this was a pretty big disappointment especially after how I saw so many people love this book. Like it's got crazy good ratings on Goodreads but it just wasn't for me. Question six is the biggest surprise and mine would be the Arcana Chronicle series by Cressley Cole because it's a freaking YA series. It's young adult or at least the first book is very much young adult and me reading YA is practically unheard of. So for me to read this one and love the series I have to give it props. So book one is this one, Poison Princess, and I have read up to book three. There's three more books, but like each book in the series got better and better for me. Like book three blew me away. I love that book so, so much, but it is mostly because it does take on a more adult or new adult feel to you know, the story. We're not dealing with kids in high school anymore. Everyone is 18 and also, you know, a couple thousand years old. We're dealing with life or death situations, powerful magic. It's the apocalypse and there's also kidnapping in that third book, which was great. So it's been an amazing series. I do highly recommend it even if you've only read Cresley Cole's adult books like I did. Like, yes, it's definitely not as crazy steamy as her erotic books, as her paranormal romances, but it is still crazy addicting and you will love the characters and there's a whole love triangle here too and Cresley Cole does such a great job at making it so hard to choose between the two heroes. Also the concept of the series of the story is really cool too. It's like based off of tarot cards. All the main characters, well the main characters and all the main side characters, they are the embodiment of tarot cards and they have magic powers because of it. So it's a cool storyline, the romance is great, a little bit angsty. And again, if you've only read Cresley Cole's adult books and maybe you're craving more and you don't have any other books to read, 
try this one out. Question seven is my favorite new author of 2022. Could be a debut or a new to me author. And this one I have to give it to Elthorpe because I literally have read six of her books in the first half of 2022. I've read two of her series and each of them has three books and I'm already planning to read more of her. But her books are so addicting, especially if you love Reverse Harem. There's some good romantic suspense as well. I was pretty surprised how much I enjoyed her because the first series that I read from her, it was set in high school and I wasn't too sure how I would feel about it, but I ended up loving it. The second series though, the spinoff of the high school one, is very much adult though. It's set in this prison. So Same View High and Same View Prison, they were fantastic. They made me fall in love with Elle Thorpe. I mean, I just bought some special editions of the Same View Prison series like two days ago. That's how much I loved it. I'm just so glad that my library got the audiobooks of the Same View High series because that's how like she even came across my radar. I was looking at new audiobooks that my library, you know, acquired and I saw this one and even though it was high school, I saw it was reverse harem so I put it on hold, listened to it and ended up loving it and wanting more of it so I just binged the series, binged the spinoff and here I am ready to read my seventh book of hers. Number eight is my newest fictional crush and this one probably doesn't say like the best things about me but my pick would be Zayd from the Cat and Mouse Duet by H.D. Carlton. This dude is an absolute psychopath. He literally stalks the heroine, he scares her but she's into it okay. This one is book one, Haunting Adeline. Book two is Hunting Adeline and Zayd is just I loved his obsession. I love obsessed alpha heroes. Sometimes obsessed alpha heroes can take it a little bit too far, but Zayd was like literally towing the line for me. But I loved him. I loved his instant obsession with the heroine. Like as soon as he saw her, he wanted her. He wanted her for himself. He knew she was it for him. And he would go to the ends of the earth to have her and keep her safe. Number nine is my newest favorite character, and that would be Danny from the Guild series by Tate James. I read this one. I read the first book for my book club and I freaking loved it. I love this series so much. Book one is Honey Trap, book two is Dead Drop, and book three is Kill Order and I pretty much binged all three books back to back. It was so good and addicting. This time it's not Reverse Harem. We only have two heroes so it's like Menage, Polly. But Danny is the heroine and she is a total badass. She is a mercenary. She knows how to fight. She knows how to kill. She's one of the strongest and most powerful people in the guild. And she's also hilarious. Like this girl had me dying so many times because she she gets into these crazy situations that would tear people apart. But because she grew up in the guild, she grew up becoming a mercenary, it's like when she gets kidnapped, when she gets tortured, she's on vacation. There's nothing that can phase her. She can get through anything and she also has two amazing men who love her. Number 10 is the book that made me cry and I don't really cry that much for books. I will squeeze out a tear maybe if I have to but I don't really like sob over books that much but Reminders of Him did make me tear up at the end of the book. This is the newest Colleen Hoover book and I don't know I just thought the ending was really really sweet. I mean I wanted more from it but it was still a very meaningful moment. Like after so much turmoil, so much emotional torture that the characters went through, they finally got their happily ever after and I was just so relieved for them so I teared up at the end. Question 11 is the book that made me happy. I would say Say My Killer Vacation is one of them and then another one would be Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. This book was absolutely adorable. I mean it's Allie Hazelwood. She writes the most adorable stories and B and Levi were the cutest couple. I mean maybe not as cute as Olive and Adam from The Love Hypothesis but that's like a super high bar. But this book did make me very happy. It's an enemies to lovers romance. It's set at NASA. Another STEM romance with a neuroscientist and an engineer. The hero is all swoony and everything. There's so much crazy longing in this book too. And also I was just crazy happy to have this book in my hands because it was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. And then question 12 is the reason why I'm finally filming this now. It's for the most beautiful book that I either bought or received so far 
far in 2022 and it has to be my Four Horsemen series special edition set from the Arcane Society. I now currently have three sets of the series like the original covers, I have the bookish box ones and then I have the Arcane Society ones and Arcane Society is probably my favorite of the three. Although I do love the hot men on the original covers too. But look how beautiful these books look. All the gorgeous gold foiling on it too. And then book two is War which is one of my top favorites of the series. They all have really pretty end pages too. Here's book three, Famine, with all the pretty green and gold. And then my favorite, book four, is Death and all the pretty blues. And they also came with these amazing prints, like if you missed the hot men on the covers, these are here. This one was Pestilence. We have my man War here. Famine, who is probably my least favorite, but I still love him. And then Death and his beautiful wings. So those are the most beautiful books that I've received so far in 2022, but I do love the bookish box ones just because of all the gorgeous foiling, like the holographic foiling on them. I just love the artwork on Arcane Society a little bit more. Moving on to question 13, it's what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So this question was hard, so I went with four books. Two of them are upcoming releases and two of them are backlist books. My upcoming releases, I am done Dying to Read Ruby Fever by Alona Andrews. This is a sixth book in the Hidden Legacy series which I've been waiting for for so long because it got pushed back like a year and it's also the third and final book for Catalina and Alessandro. I love this series though. I love Alona Andrews. It's such an amazing paranormal romance series though each couple is pretty slow burn when it comes to the romance but it's still fantastic. And then my other upcoming release that I will definitely be reading soon is Storm Echo by Nalini Singh. This is going to be the newest book in the Side Changeling Trinity series. I don't remember which book we're on. This is like the sixth book maybe in the Trinity series. And then we're in the 20s for the Psy Changeling world. We're getting up there. But this is going to be a Psy and Changeling romance, one of my favorite pairings in this world. I adore the series. It's one of my top favorite paranormal romance series of all time, like the whole Psy Changeling world. So I'm definitely going to be reading this soon. And then for my two backlist books, I am planning on reading By a Thread by Lucy Score because of how much I loved Things We Never Got Over. A lot of people have told me that this one is the their favorite Lucy score book so I'm really really excited. It's a grumpy boss romantic comedy so another grumpy sunshine romance from Lucy score. And then I'm also planning on reading After the Fall by Gianna Darling which is book four in her Fallen Men series. I've been meaning to continue with the series for so so long. I think I read the first three books like two years ago and I haven't continued after that. I will say I thought this book was going to be about a new couple and I just realized it's not. We're going back to the couple from the first book, but I do love them so I'm not too mad about it and I have accidentally come across some spoilers for this one and for like later books in the series so I will prepare myself for it. But yeah, I just really want to continue with the Fallen Men series. I don't know if I'll catch up entirely on it by the end of the year, but I'm definitely going to plan on reading after the fall. And then the last question in this mid-year book freakout tag is my favorite book to movie adaptation that I've seen so far this year. And for this one, I'm not going to go with a movie, but a series. And it's the Summer I Turned Pretty series by Jenny Han. I freaking loved the show so much. Five out of five. All this high school drama and angst, I was there for it. I also had a lot of nostalgia while I was watching it because of how much I adored the series growing up. Teenage Me absolutely loved the summer series. It was one of my top favorite series of all time. So getting to see it adapted into a show with really great actors, it was everything that Teenage Me wanted. I mean, all the angst killed me but in a good way. It was as frustrating as it was exciting to watch but it worked for the show. So if you love The Summer I Turned Pretty you definitely need to watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. But that is it for this mid-year book freakout tag from me. If you want to answer any of these questions in the comments please feel free to. As always links to all the books that I mentioned will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!